Welcome to Chamber Chat. I'm Judy Taylor, President of the Habersham County Chamber of Commerce. Thank you for joining us. My guests today include Rush Money with Erwin Rush in Clarksville, the Member of the Month, and Mike Carter, a 21st Century Bounty Hunter. And my first guest is Rush Money. Welcome, Rush. Thank you, Judy. It's great to be with you again. Well, I just appreciate so much your being on Chamber Chat. And Rush, you've been on before as co-owner of Global Tech, better known as the Candle Factory That's in right. Cornelia. Yeah, I guess it's been three or four years ago now. It probably has but been. But you know, I got a lot of people to tell me that they uh, saw that uh, particular program. So people are watching Chamber Chat. They do. They yeah. really do. It goes into several counties. Yeah. But today you're on talking about a brand new endeavor of yours. You have a new store on the square in Clarksville. That's right. Um, we've just recently moved our uh, store that was on the square in Cleveland to downtown Clarksville. It's called Irwin Rush and I started it about uh, I guess uh, four years ago. In Cleveland. In Cleveland, mm -hmm. and outgrew my space there, and by just uh, sort of uh, accident, discovered that the space there in Clarksville in the old Carey's building on the corner uh, was gonna become available, and it was a perfect fit for us. And so we've been there since, uh, the uh, weekend of Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. and I tell you, it's probably the best move we ever made. Well, I know you opened up just before Christmas, as right. you said, the weekend of Thanksgiving, and uh, and every time I have been by there, there have been people in there. They go in shopping, they go in looking, and they go in just to have an experience. Well, that's right. I think you just hit the nail on the head when you said experience, mm -hmm. and I know that's sort of part of Clarksville's uh, tagline is experience it Clarksville. Is. So mm -hmm. we, we certainly fit that mode of uh, having an experience. And mm -hmm. I've, when you come in the store, and I've been so proud of the fact that people have commented on that uh, openly uh, to us. Uh, in fact, recently a lady said, this is the most fun place I've ever been in in my whole life. And of course, I swelled with pride mm -hmm. when I uh, well, heard I that feel comment. This, <laughs> you go in and you do not want to leave. It's just, you just keep looking at it more and more. But I want to tell you what I am so impressed with too, Rush. Your windows, your store windows are just bringing people in. You have the, I'm just going to say it, you have the prettiest windows in Clarksville. And, well, thank you. And uh, I want to know, who decorates those windows? Well, um, I usually do the majority of it, but it's it's an effort of uh, all of us there at the store to put things together. And I might get so far with one thing, and then I ask them to keep adding to it. And so we, we all uh, have a part uh, in, in putting it mm -hmm. together. But that's kind of uh, one of uh, my... I don't know if hobby is the right word, but I've always loved to do uh, store windows. And in fact, when I was a teenager, I used to do store windows for a lady's dress shop in Cleveland mm -hmm. in exchange for her allowing me to sell uh, the props that I used, uh, you know, on the display. So mm -hmm. it's kind of been a thing with me. Well, you are artsy, me. Rush. You didn't... I you're not an art major. Yeah, I'm an art major. Okay, yeah. that, that kind of explains it because yeah. you have that art eye yeah. and, uh, and you can tell it. And you go inside your store and your displays. I went in at Christmas and you probably won't remember this, but I wanted to buy one of the Christmas trees and you or so somebody said, that's a display. Yeah. You know, it wasn't for sale, you, it was just a display, but it was so pretty. Well, but uh, let's talk about the line of products that you have there because it's kind of eclectic. Mm -hmm. It's just uh, a, a lot of different things. It's kind of like if you're looking for something and you can't find it, go there and see if it's there because it just might be there. You're exactly right but, on that, uh, Judy. You have some antiques and you have some new items. Right. And uh, talk about your line of items. Okay. We uh, pride ourselves. Uh, I like to say that Irwin Rush is always old, new, 
and interesting. Allegory. We have a, a collection or a, a, a just a group of things that are antiques. We have brand new merchandise uh, that, of course, we uh, reorder and stock continually. And then we have uh, interesting things that may even be a repurposed uh, item uh, mm -hmm. that we that we've bought uh, at an estate sale or happened on. So. It's a, it's a nice collection and range of things that anybody could use in their home for their own decorating mm -hmm. or to give as a gift. Mm -hmm. And we really start our stores kind of laid out with, we, we feature home fragrance. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, I carry our, our, our Habersham <laughs> Candle Global Tech yes. wax pottery and the things that we make. And then we have soaps and lotions and uh, personal care products, and then uh, we also have uh, a lot of uh, kitchen decor and uh, items, mm -hmm. and we're even selling a limited amount of uh, food items. We have uh, some of Logan Berry's uh, products f uh, from the farm that my wife runs, the organic farm, and we sell Nadine's uh, homemade chicken salad and pimento cheese. Mm -hmm. And then as you continue on around, there's a crisp, uh, Christmas section that we leave up all year long because as you know and we all know and are glad of we have visitors from out of our area year round so this gives them another opportunity to pick up a memento from um, while they're visiting with mm -hmm. us but um, it jewelry we have ladies jewelry and scarves mm -hmm. uh, that's kind of been a specialty of ours and my daughter Jessamine uh, helps me pick out scarves and jewelry when we uh, go to market and do mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. So it's a, a garden section. I don't want to forget that because mm -hmm. that's one of the big things that mm -hmm. uh, that we sell. Mm -hmm. And everything, uh, your, I know your food items are specialty items. Right. And uh, it's, uh, every time I've been in there, you've been kind of giving away samples yeah, of food items. Yeah, we do. Items. Yeah, we sample the food items uh, on select days and so that people can get a taste of uh, mm -hmm. uh, the, the, right. the different uh, foods and know what they're buying before they actually mm -hmm. buy it. And they enjoy that. Sure. And you know, Judy, that helps create the experience it does. as well. And, and the atmosphere in there, it's, it's just good. It's just, even if you're not going to buy anything, just go in and look around. Right. And we recognize that's an important thing, that people don't always come to a store to buy that mm -hmm. day. So we, we love browsers to come look mm -hmm. around. And then maybe when they need a gift or need something for their own home, they'll think of us and come back mm -hmm. because they took the time to just look around and see mm -hmm. uh, what we had. That's right. Rush, I can't believe it. Our time is gone. But just quickly tell our audience, the days you're open in the times. Okay. We're open Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. till 6. We try to stay that extra uh, time after five so mm -hmm. folks when they get off work can come in and shop with us and then on Saturday we're open from 10 until 5. Okay. Rush, thank you for being on, on well, thank Chamber you. Chat. I appreciate the opportunity. And best of luck to you with Erin Rush on the square in Clarksville. Well, thank you. Thank you. We're going to take another short commercial break and be right back. Please stay with us. Thank you for staying with us. My next guest is the member of the month, Scoville from Clarksville. And representing Scoville is April Spiegel. Welcome, April. Hi, thank you for having us here. Well, congratulations on being the member of the month. Yeah. That is quite an honor. Yes, thank you very much. We appreciate it. And I just appreciate your being here. And we just appreciate Scoville so much in Habersham County. And I'm just wondering, how long has Scoville been in Habersham County? Well, we've actually been here about 60 years. Uh, the company opened the facility in the mid-50s, but Scoville itself has actually been a much longer history. Uh, we've been in business over 200 years and started in, in Connecticut, actually. 
Oh, really? Yes. Okay. But now, the world headquarters is in Clarksville, is yes. it not? Yes, it is. Because when you answer the telephone, or uh, you don't, but but when you call there some, and somebody answers the phone, they'll say, Scoville World Headquarters. Mm -hmm. And I have always taken so much pride in the fact that Scoville World Headquarters is in Haversham County. We do appreciate that so very much. Uh, well, April, tell us, what types of products does Scoville make? Uh, we do a lot of different things. Uh, it's all related to metal. We actually make here in Clarksville. Uh, we have buttons, snaps, grommets and washers, and other types of fasteners for many, many different industries. Um, we do products for the apparel industry and fashion, so a lot of brand names that many viewers have heard of, um, including you know, Gap, Walmart, um, even more fashion-oriented brands like True Religion as well. Um, and then on our industrial side of our business, we have more specialty applications for boating equipment, the military, um, and, as well as canvas products and more heavy-duty applications as well. Mm -hmm. There's many, many different industries. Mm -hmm. I believe that I heard somewhere along the way that you all were making a fastener for um, a helmet for sports or? Yes, actually we do. Uh, we, I believe it's somewhere in the neighborhood of 80 to 90 percent of the world's football helmets have Scoville snaps on them. So we, we make those snaps for the two major companies that provide football helmets for NFL as well as for college, high schools, etc. So we, we have a lot of Scoville snaps on football equipment. That is awesome. Mm -hmm. When you think about all these helmets, that and, and so uh, do you do it just for the professional teams or high school teams? Oh yeah, it's for all football helmets. So yeah, yeah, wow. it's not just the NFL, but also college and, and high school football helmets as well. So eighty to ninety percent of mm -hmm. all the snaps on all these football helmets are made right yes, here. Yes, right Hampshire here County. in Clarksville. Yep. Mm -hmm. That yeah. is amazing. Yeah, and it's, it's really amazing. A lot of people have probably come in contact with our products or worn our products or seen our products, but don't realize what, what they're looking at. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that is, that, is, that is awesome to me. Uh, but I, do, I did know that you all had a line of fasteners mm -hmm. because your sign out front used to say something like, you've been fascinating the world since a certain date. Yes, that's correct, yeah, since 1802. Yes. Yeah. So we've updated our, our tagline and, and our logo, actually. So our new tagline is, great designs deserve great fasteners. Mm -hmm. So, um, and we try to we try to encapsulate that with, with all of our customers. So you could be a fashion designer or you could be an engineering designer. So mm -hmm. no matter what, you're getting a great, a great product to mm -hmm. work with. That is exciting. So many exciting things happen in Habersham County. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, there are other industries that provide 75 or 80 percent of the world's product right here in Hampership County. Mm -hmm. But I, I'm, I did not know that Scoville did that with the football helmets. That's exciting. And April, I know how supportive you and all of Scoville is of the Chamber of Commerce. Because, I mean, that's one of the reasons that you remember the month. You are mm -hmm. so supportive. And I know some of the things that you do in the community. But the member of the month is always pretty active in the in the community. So tell our audience some other things that you do. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, we definitely want to engage with the community, but also from the employees' perspective as well. So many of our employees are actually out there in community participating. And in addition to that, we, we do actually ask our employees to provide suggestions of, mm -hmm. of programs we should participate with. Um, so some of the major programs we're actually sponsoring or working with are Habitat, Habitat for Humanity. Um, and also Partners in Education and American Heart Association among some other major groups. But we also do sponsor some more local uh, scholarships, some school support. Um, we actually do even have a softball team uh, with the Church League here in Habersham County as well. So our employees actually play on that team as well. So we're out there in many ways out in the community. You are, and it's, it's, uh, you're, you're getting your employees engaged. Mm -hmm. You're getting them active out in the community, and that's very good. I knew you were very active in the community because you do support us so much. Well, now, I don't know exactly what I'm talking about here, April, but there is a company, Marito, Marita? Yes, Marito, yes. Marito, mm -hmm. Marito. Is that your parent company? Yes, they are. They actually acquired us in 2014. Okay, well, how, tell me how that kind of came about and what is their role? 
Sure. Um, for for the purposes of just um, owning the company, we are actually a, a separate entity from Merido. We're a subsidiary of Merido. So Merido actually has many other divisions. They work in transportation industry. They have consumer products as well. And then, of course, their fastener division, which is what we're a part of. Um, but we operate on our own. Um, and so they were actually interested in us as a strategic fit for their company. They're trying to grow throughout the world. Um, and they looked at us for, especially for our presence here in the United States, Mexico, Canada, but as well as Europe, even parts of Asia, we actually have a very big presence because we are a global company. Um, so we were a perfect fit to help expand their business into other areas of the world that they'd never been in before. Mm -hmm. And especially in the fashion industry, they're very interested um, in that as well. Mm -hmm. Well, when they acquired your company, did, how did that affect operations for your employees? Yeah, it actually has not affected operations. Uh, we've continued on since then operating. We still run three shifts of, of work every day. Fasteners are coming out uh, all three shifts. Mm -hmm. So that actually hasn't affected the way we operate. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I kind of felt that way. I remember when Marito took, acquired you. Mm -hmm. That was in the newspaper. I remember that. And uh, and I have I have not heard of uh, you know of employees leaving you know or any 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 big change. There. No, not really. I mean, over sixty percent of our employees have, have worked at Scoville here in Clarksville for over ten years, and mm -hmm. some even twenty percent or thirty percent mm -hmm. over twenty years. Mm -hmm. So that hasn't really changed at all. If anything, we've gained benefit by having Marito as as mm -hmm. or being mm -hmm. part of the Marito family is what I should say. Well, what you just said speaks so well for Scoville that some of your employees have been there for so long, 30 years, or you probably have employees who uh, whose parents worked there. Oh, yes, multi yes, family, yes, multi-family members. Um, I've, I've multi run across- Multi-generational. Yes, multi-generational, exactly. And I've met people just around town that, oh, I used to work at Scoville, or I knew somebody that worked at Scoville. I'm related to somebody that works at Scoville. So we're a huge part of this community for many generations, yeah. Well, I have heard uh, that you all really take care of your employees, how good you are to them. And we appreciate that. April, thank you for being on Chamber Chat. And uh, thank you again for Scoville and what all Scoville does. Mm -hmm. I do want to just kind of throw in that uh, uh, I believe your position is, you, what is your position? I'm the Director of Marketing and Communications. Director of mm -hmm. Marketing and Communications. And Craig Stout, who is a CEO or plant manager? CEO. CEO. Mm -hmm. He was traveling today. Yes, yes. And, uh, but we appreciate your coming on, and again, congratulations on being Member of the Month. Great. Well, thank you very much. We're going to take another short commercial break and be right back. Please stay with us. for staying with us. My last guest today is Mike Carter. He is a fugitive recovery agent with the National Bail Recovery mm -hmm. Services, but better known as a bounty hunter. Welcome, Mike. Good, good afternoon. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Mike, thank you for being on Chamber Chat. It's my pleasure. You asked, I'm here. And my, every time people learn that you are a bounty hunter, because that's easier to say than fugitive recovery agent. And it just depends on what state you're in. Uh, here in Georgia, state code calls us a bail recovery agent, mm -hmm. but everybody knows what a bounty hunter everybody is. Everybody knows what a bounty hunter is. But when, when people find out you're a bounty hunter, their eyes get wide and it's like, wow, a wild west cowboy here. Well, everybody <laughs> wants to hear a story, that's for sure. Everybody wants to hear a story. And I know you have plenty that you could tell. I know that. So Mike, tell us exactly what you do and exactly what does a fugitive recovery agent do and how did you get into the business? Well, I generally, my first response to that is I fell and hit my head. <laughs> That's the humorous side of it. Uh, I got into it. I felt like that 
I would have a lot of the core skill sets that were required. I mean, most people think about the apprehension time when you're going and putting the cuffs on them, but there's a lot more to it than that. First and foremost, you've got to find them and locate them, and that's mm -hmm. one of the, the greatest challenges to, to being able to get somebody in custody and back into the uh, uh, custody of the uh, jurisdiction that they belong. But uh, basically what we do is we go after people who have been arrested, been accused of a crime, have been incarcerated, and in their pretrial stage before they go to court, they seek release, and they do that through bonding out. So mm -hmm. they post a, a fee, which is generally uh, up to 15% in Georgia, and that allows them to be out. When they're out, they are the prisoner of the bonding company. Right. So when they choose not to go to court, that's when mm -hmm. I get involved and return them back. Mm -hmm. So you actually work pretty well for bonding or bail bail companies. Correct. Uh, well, what do you do for, wh when you locate them? You, when you locate a fugitive, uh, then you, what, take them back to jail? Well, the first thing is you have to devise a plan so that you can get them into custody as safe as possible because that's, that's the goal. Obviously, these people really aren't interested in going to jail or they would have uh, probably cooperated from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. So uh, doing it safely, trying to devise a plan so that whether it's through surprise or whether just cutting off all of their exits. Uh, and then once we get them, we take and we put, them in, uh, we put them in handcuffs or we put them in belly chains or we put them in leg irons, whatever we need to do based on the threat that they propose. And uh, then our job is to get them back to the jurisdiction that they flee. So I may go to California to get one. I may go to, to, to any state. I cover all 50 states. But once I get them, they have to go back to the jurisdiction from which they fled. Mm -hmm. So you might even go to California and bring somebody back to Georgia. Correct. And, uh, well, well, tell me this, Mike. Do you work by yourself? I now, do. It sounds like a scary thing to be out there by yourself. Go, I know you go into horrible neighborhoods. Well, I've hunted in several of the most dangerous neighborhoods in the United States. Uh, we have one here in Atlanta, the Bluff, that's very well known for uh, the fact that they run that area. I do hunt by myself on occasions, but generally with another partner. Um, what we try to do is cut off the access. You know, they love to run out the back door. Actually, I like doing backdoor a good bit. I, can, I enjoy seeing the look on their face when they come running out and you get to take them into custody then. But it, it's, it's really, it's, you know, it's one of those things where I look at the file, I determine the severity of the individual and try to predict mm -hmm. what they may or may not do. And based on that, I would decide. But I have my, my trusty partner here, Yori, who goes with me and helps protect me if I am by myself. Do you take him with you on all your oh, yeah. trips? He makes it real clear first with these uh, prisoners that acting out is not going to end well for them. Mm -hmm. So he, I, I think he's been with you for a while now oh, yeah. on he, every trip. He's my partner. I've got his back and he has mine. Mm -hmm. that, that's exciting. I, I like that. I like that very much. Well, Mike, what are the qualifications to be? A, I can just imagine that if any young, young men or women or hearing this, they might say, hey, that sounds like an exciting life. They might want to be a, a bounty hunter because I think of the Wild West and I think of, you know, oh, I, don't, I can't remember who all these people were now, but they were bounty hunters. Mm -hmm. Hunters. What are the qualifications to well, be a bounty hunter? It depends hunter? state by state, but in Georgia, one of the, Georgia is one of the, has the, some of the best laws with regards to bounty hunting. You have to be 25 years of age which a lot of people are surprised because you can be a lot younger and be a law enforcement officer. But to be a bounty hunter in Georgia, you have to be 25 years of age, you have to be a resident, you have to take continuing education every year. And the key to that is you have to know the law. We're in the business of revoking people's freedom and that's mm -hmm. a very serious thing to do. Mm -hmm. um, and then you have to have a concealed carry permit that allows you to uh, carry the weapon. And uh, probably the most difficult thing in this business is to get a bonding company that will hire you. And that's because mm -hmm. of the liability that goes along with it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we are authorized to use deadly force. And uh, there is a lot of, like I say, liability that goes along with that responsibility. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we, try to do, uh, we try to do our job and we have less than lethal uh, 
devices that we use. I think everybody's familiar with the taser. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think the taser is probably one of the best tools outside of this tool mm -hmm. that you can use to get somebody into custody and get them back to where they belong safely. But Mike, I've known you for a long time now, a good while, and you seem, you, I, you're always care, you always have a taser on you, just about it. Most Pretty, of the time. I mean, I generally, and you have a gun. I, I generally have at least four to five weapons on me, um, mm -hmm. just because of the fact that I work in five states for several dozen companies. I work in 22 counties here. And that's the other thing that uh, in Georgia that you do have to be registered in the county where the bonding company resides. So in Georgia, I'm registered with 22 uh, sheriff's department. But it's, it's, it's one of those situations where uh, most of these people just made mistakes. And then we've got a percentage of them that they're, they're bad people. Mm -hmm. The key is figuring out who is who and mm -hmm. treating them with respect and getting them back in there. Surprisingly enough, about 98% of the people that I put in jail shake my hand and thank me when it's over. Mm -hmm. Well, Mike, what would you like for people to know about the bail bonding business? Well, first of all, if you find yourself in the situation where that you are on bond and you're welcome to call me to get you on bond, mm -hmm. but don't run. It doesn't get better with time. It only gets worse. And right now we have some things going on in some different states. We've got some organizations who have advocated to do away with cash bail, which if done, puts a huge responsibility on the taxpayers because we are the best value in the criminal justice system. As it stands right now, it's user pay. When people don't show up for court, the bonding company hires me, I go out and get them and return them at no expense to the taxpayer. Right now, for example, New Jersey just passed, a, uh, they did a constitutional amendment, which the citizens didn't mm -hmm. understand what they were doing. They passed a new law, and as of January 1st this year, somewhere between 80 and 90 percent of the people that would be arrested and incarcerated and have to bond out with the responsibility to return to court are just walking free. Mm -hmm. And it's going to cost the citizens of New Jersey between 50 and 100 million dollars Plus, once they don't return, we've got all those outstanding warrants that those citizens are going to have to pay for somebody to go get them. Well, what I like about your situation is taxpayers don't pay you. No. Like I said, we and are. And if the sheriff goes after them, taxpayers are paying them. Mike, our time is up. I, I could talk with you a long time about your experiences. that will have to be another day. But I usually end with a quote, and my quote today is really inspired by you, Mike. And it is, as far as I know, it is anonymous. And it says, do not go where the path may lead. Go instead where there is no path and leave a trail. <laughs> Thank you for being with us, and I will see you next time.